Hello, good morning, welcome back. I'm Claire, this is Purple Poppy, and today we are working on the next part of our file folder project with the Happiness in Crafting Vintage Botanical Kit. Now, while I've been off camera, I have gone through and I have paper clipped the various parts that are left from the kit to the various areas that I want to use them throughout the folder that we've been making. I've also made a, sorry I pulled that off, a scrappy page edge, so we'll talk about that and I've got another one prepared to go there and I've also done some paper ruffles there and we'll talk about those. So I'm guessing that this will be the last one of this series because um, I think this is number six or seven now and I didn't want it to go on for forever, okay? So, first things first, we have these two odd little adornments that haven't got a home yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some holes in this top pocket. So I have got my punch and I'm thinking I want one about there. Let's pull that little bit out. And I want one about there. Pull that little bit out as well and then I'm just going to put a little grommet in <clears throat> and we can hang those two on so that's going to be as it were the first job of the day so and I know you've all got various different types of um, hole punches and setters and obviously you all know how yours work so I'm just going to get that in there, line that up, press that down, and then we're going to do the same with this one. Now obviously I'm doing two because I've got two of the little hangers, so the little grommet keeps getting stuck up my finger now, so I can't quite get it in the hole, but hang on, there we go. Um, I've decided to do two because I've got two of the little hangers. Now, if you decide to obviously make more of the little hangers, which I've now lost, goodness me, I will go down as the YouTuber who loses everything, won't I? There we go. Um, if you've obviously chosen to make more of these little hangers, then you will undoubtedly want to make more holes and that is absolutely fine. No problem there at all. Oh, goodness sake. I seem to be all fingers and thumbs this morning. I've obviously not had quite enough coffee. And yet, I've been up since about 5am. So I should be well and truly awake. There you go, so we've got one dangle there. And this one I've got on the safety pin, mainly because when I was prepping for the video, I couldn't lay my hands on another bulb pin. Um, but obviously you must use whatever option you want. Use a bulb pin, use a safety pin. So that's those dealt with. <clears throat> Get rid of those little washers, because we don't need the washers. So then if we start right at the very beginning here with our flap, okay? So I'm gonna take the paper clip off and what I've got here is the fabric tag. So I just want to put some decoration on the top of that. And I've got one of these postcards. Now this I am going to, as always, back onto some coffee dyed paper 
and I thought this time it would be quite nice to put it on the lined paper to follow the journaling lines. So let's get this stuck on here first of all. Get my glue book. So I trust you've all had a lovely weekend. Um, I know a couple of you have been waiting for this. I've had comments that you're waiting to move on. I was a bit naughty. I did a couple of videos over the weekend that were much more just random stuff that I was doing that I thought I would share with you rather than having a set. Sorry, I've got this crooked. Rather than having a set subject matter. So that's what I did. I just did some random um, crafting and I just brought you along for the ride so I was naughty sorry but um, I think sometimes if you work on the same thing every day for a while you sort of lose the edge with it so it's better in my opinion if you've got a long project to intermingle with other things so that's what I was doing so now I'm just going to trim this off like so and obviously again I'm only backing this because I have printed the whole kit on copy up 80 gram copy of paper so certain things need a little bit extra support if you've printed on a thicker paper you won't need to do this okay so there we go we've got a lovely journaling card with an interesting front there so we want to tab on that and we want something interesting on this and i think what i'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of my trusty cheesecloth. You know how I feel about cheesecloth. Actually, we'll have two pieces. One for each item. Like so. Where is... I had... There is a little bit of ribbon here as well. So I think we're going to have a length about... Let's fold it in half. It's not much of it left. This is the end of a um, oh dear, not sorry silk um, seam binding roll. So I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm just going to fold each one in half like that. I think, yeah. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue on here like so I'm gonna get a little bit of cheesecloth and then I'm gonna fold my ribbon in half you'll note there's not a there's not a hole in this like you might often put and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in to our remaining pieces there's not many of them now and I'm going to use this pinky circle am I going to use this pinky circle no I'm not I'm going to use this pinky diamond the tile and I'm just gonna trim that off around the edges okay where's my glue book gone you see I will go down as the youtuber who has no idea where anything is blind as a bat I'm gonna have to get some fluorescent paint or something so that I can paint over and know where everything is all the time. There we go. I'm just going to use that as my 
decorative top and that's the first thing to go into our flappy pocket. I'm just going to pop that in there like so. Okay, and then this one I'm going to do the same but slightly different. So I'm going to glue at the top there. Again, we want a semi matching pair. So I'm going to put on the cheesecloth and then the ribbon. But what I want to do this time. Is I want to cut out this pink tab, not tag, tab. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half because I don't want the two halves. You know, that's something else you should bear in mind. When you're working with a kit, there is nothing naughty about not necessarily using the kit the way it's been presented to you. And what I mean by that is, you know, this is a tab. It's meant to have two holes, one for the front, one for the back. Well, I don't want to use it for that. So, you know, don't change it round and use it for what you want so obviously I've stuck it down again for a bit of extra strength and I'm just fussy cutting not very well around it and then what I want to do is I'm going to glue the little top tab bit only just that top area and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to put it just up there like that and by doing that what I can, I'm obviously going to put something on the front there in a minute what I can do is I can use that as a tuck okay so that's why I've cut it in half and I've only cut the little top bit and then I think what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same with this red one that goes with this particular card and we'll cut it in half I'm not going to back it this time because obviously I'm sticking it onto this card That's children going off to school by the sounds of it. Okay. Let's glue this up. All of it this time. And let's just pop it on the diagonal on top of those. Okay. And now, because I've used that tab... I can just line it up, you have to obviously see what you're doing, which helps, and that is now on top of that pocket, okay, right, so if we turn the pocket over, you can see it's just tucked inside that pocket on that tab area now, alright, if you don't want to do that, you want to turn it over and do it on this side, and do it on that side whatever it doesn't really matter or if you don't want to do that you can just put it inside okay so now we've got two things in that pocket one front one back whatever suits now we're going to i'm going to glue these down because i want these two to go in this pocket okay so again using the lined paper i think that will 
fit on there but that one won't so i think i prefer the lime paper on the cards so i'm going to use the lime paper for this one and then some normal coffee dyed paper for the other one okay so again line that up press that down where i'm not going to say it anymore where is because it's just silly <laughs> oh dear i suppose you could call it crazy monday morning couldn't you really there you go right so that is all pressed down beautifully we'll leave that for a minute to get a proper grip i'm gonna pull another piece of coffee dyed paper out and I'm going to do this tag so get the tag done I don't know how it is weather wise where you are um, the snow has very much settled here so it's quite pretty and white well it is in the back garden where nobody except the dog's been and there's pretty little paw patterns in the snow um, at the front it's maybe not so pretty because there's been cars and people walking up and down and whilst it seems to be too cold to have gone slushy you know that horrible slush you get it's um, <clears throat> it is starting to sort of compact and not look as pretty as it was okay so I'm going to trim these out again I'm not going to put any um, embellishment on these. I think they're pretty enough on their own. Doesn't mean that obviously you can't if you want to put a bit of ribbon or lace or something just to enhance it further. That's absolutely fine. At the end of the day, what is it Nick the Booksmith says? I ain't your mum. Your project, your paper your creativity there we go so that's that one done and going in there and then the tag we will obviously want to put um, a little topper on I might just put one of the tabs on the top of this maybe a bit of cheesecloth underneath it can't resist it You can see it's starting to curl a little bit. That's because the glue's not properly dry yet. Just pull it back. It'll, as it dries, it will flatten nicely. It's one of the reasons I like Pritt Stick. Um, it's malleable when it's damp like this. But as we've established with some of the journal covers and things that I've shown you, once that glue is set, it seems to set rock hard and add a real thickness to what you're doing, which is one of the reasons I love it. So I think we'll have a little bit of cheesecloth. Whoops, a little bit of cheesecloth on the top of this. I guess I should move the folder out of the way really and then you might be able to see a little bit better let's do that there we go that's extra bits of paper so just a little bit of glue on the top of that a bit of cheesecloth and then let's find the tag that we want on this we want that purpley butterfly one really don't we so i'm gonna pull that off there again i am not going to back it because it's going on to the tag at the top And then I'm just going to fold it over and trim those pieces out there. 
like so. Now obviously if you have a particular favourite way to do your tags then that's what you must do. But for those of you that are wanting to follow along and have some ideas put in front of you, this is how I'm doing it. Okay. And then obviously line that one up at the back so the wider pieces only are on the tab tag of the tab then fold it over and press it home and if you've got that cheesecloth lifting up give it a little bit more so there you go and that's that one and that sits in that pocket there okay now I'm not going to go through and stick all of these things that have been paper clipped in because I want you to be able to get off and start crafting rather than just sitting there listening to me. But it gives you a good idea of what I've done. This one here, I'm going, I'll do that one so you can see because that's not necessarily standard what I'm going to do there. So let's just move that up the page so it's out of the way. So on this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run glue down one side, across the bottom, and I'm going to use it on this music page. Oh, I need to move that paper clip again. There we go. On this music page as a tuck spot so that we'll be able to slot things underneath there okay that's that one um, and I'm going to show you how to make one of these so all this is is a piece of coffee dyed paper that again is double the width that you want and then what I did was I took I'm sorry, there's Bo. Good morning, Bo. Um, I took the odd pieces that... Oh, I clipped them in here, didn't I? Duh. I took the odd pieces that we had ripped off to make our various pockets and I cut them up into squares and rectangles and stuck them on one side. And the reason I've stuck them on one side is because what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue across both sides of the top and across both sides of the bottom. Okay. And then we are going to pop it on the side of our page. Like so. Now, it obviously overhangs our page at the top. So, if you haven't caught it there, just get... If you haven't caught it there at the top of the page, just get an extra bit of glue in there before it's fully set. Okay? A little bit of extra glue. Let's pull that cheesecloth out. Okay. And again, what we've created there is a decorative page edge but also a pocket on that side and a pocket on that side or a little tuck area okay if you want to there's no reason not to come along decorate this up a little bit of music paper some of the pieces that you have left this obviously i will glue on two sides again right these ones these are for our strings so I'm gonna trim them off just down the sides like so like so okay and then if you
glue both of them. Okay, there's one, there's two. Make sure you've got them up the right way and decide how long you want each of your strings. So I'm going to do mine about there. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the cord on it, press it down. I'm then going to put the other one on top and line it up. The other beauty of the print stick is it does allow you to slide these around. Okay, and now we're going to cut them together to make sure they're in the right place. So I'm going to trim across the bottom there, and that takes the extra cord out of the way. I'm going to trim up the side where there's a little bit of white showing. And then I'm just going to cut across the corner. Turn it over. Cut across the corner. And just, there's a little tiny white area there. Obviously, you can put it on to a separate piece of paper to protect your book and just go round that with your photo stain or whatever it is that you, your vintage photo, whatever it is you use. And then we've got one on the bottom there. And then this side, I've put two circles just to make it a bit different. So, glue the circle. Find how long you want your string to be. I'm going to go across there like so. Okay. I'm then going to, because circles are a little bit harder to negotiate, double sided, I'm just going to trim this one round. Obviously, if you have the right size punch, the most easy way to do this is just to punch it, but unfortunately, I don't come on that size. Then if you hold it up, if you hold it up, you'll get a little bit of light through the back, and you can offer your circle up to where the circle is because you can see the light through, you know, the light through it, okay? And then obviously you can just trim round it. As you know, my cutting is not the best. And this is probably more of an apple than a circle. By the time I've finished, make sure that when you come round here, you don't get carried away and cut your string. And that would be a little bit disastrous. Okay, there's the string. And again, just give that a little ink up. round your edges and that is your strings trimmed and decorated okay so that's that bit done so then we come over ah this one i will do with you so that's the one that we made into the little booklet so what i'm going to do there is i'm just going to grab some lace um, what have we got? Bluey, pinky. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Want something fairly deep. I think that'll work. So I'm going to use this pink, and I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm going to go across the page. Now, obviously, you can use any kind of lace that you require 
if your lace is very delicate you may want to again back it onto some paper because also the thing you do have sometimes is it it can get stuck in the holes um, but I quite like the look of just the lace so I'm just prick sticking round okay you can obviously use Fabri-Tac if you want to I don't feel the need okay and then I will put a little bit of my coffee dyed fabric just because you know I'm a little bit addicted to it um, right through the middle like so let's just get the edges I'm just gonna run right the way through the middle and I'm gonna set it in the middle like so okay and then I'm gonna find one of our pieces there we go I'm gonna find one of our pieces to decorate that this one would probably work beautifully so trim that one in black so so yet again we have watched we have watched the end of a series that we were enjoying and now we start the mammoth hunt of finding something else to watch absolutely bizarre so i'm only going to glue the middle fat belly bit of that because i want it there like so okay so then we've got a little pocket for our booklet okay our ruffle so what I did here was I basically folded it up like any normal ruffle I've not put it on the sewing machine all I have done is obviously missed that one all I've done is glued it okay and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a ribbon all the way down there I want a bluey type one what we got um, I'm going to run a ribbon all the way down there so that it looks finished off as it were and then I'm going to put that decorative tag across the top so I'm going to hang that off the bottom that will be the bottom and I'm going to cut that level at the top like so okay and then I'm just literally keep moving this so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to literally run the glue down the centre like so. Make sure that I hang this diagonal bit off the bottom like so. There we go. And then this tiny tag. Again, I'm just going to trim around it. And then I'm going to put it at the top, as it were, like an anchor for that ribbon. Okay, a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to anchor that with that just like that okay and then I'm going to run glue now you have to be careful here because you want it hanging off the page you've got to work out to make sure you put the glue on the right side otherwise you'll have sticky edge which we don't want so I've gone from the middle out okay and I'm going to position that on there like so I'm just 
going to make sure that that is nicely pressed down. So there you go, we've got our ruffle there. Okay, so that's how I did that. Right, now what we want to do now is we want to do the one of the one of these. So I've got the coffee dyed paper, okay? It's about an inch and a half, it's not even straight. I'm folding it in half, okay? And we're gonna work this way because we want it to slot on our page, okay? And I'm literally gonna run glue all the way down there. Get rid of that bit. See, this is why I shouldn't be let loose with messy things. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this out. Nice bit of cheesecloth. And I'm just gonna plonk that on there, like so. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim the edge like so. Okay, like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these pieces and we're gonna cut them into the squares and rectangles that I told you about with the other ones. So these were just the offcuts that we had from making the various components. And I'm just doing them very roughly square. Okay, might do that one thin. And then those two fat, okay? And then all I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, so I'm going to glue the backs. So glue the back. I'm doing it in my fingers because I'm not allowed to say it, but yet again, I've lost my glue book. Ta -da. There it is. Right. Okay. Let's get this going properly. So we've put one on. I'm going to put a long green one on and I'm just going down decorating and covering the coffee dyed paper to be the decorative edge that we're about to use. So it's a very simple way of using up bits of the kit to make sure that there's no waste. That's all. Because at the end of the day, you know, that's your paper and your ink. You don't want to be putting bits in the bin or adding more to your scraps box. You've got to find something to do with later on. Use it up in the project you're working on. That's my uh, philosophy. Also, of course, because it's the kit that you're working with, it's all the correct colour combinations. So it just works really well, really easy. Okay. And we've got that one on there. So just like that, in a few minutes, we have created that. Okay. So again, do a wide one at the top because we now know this is definitely longer than our page. And then offer it up to the side of your page, okay? Make sure that the bottom is on the bottom and then you've got that overlapping top like so and then you've got your tuck spot in there and your little tuck spot in there okay that's our tuck we did these is obviously pockets this is your tag obviously you just need to 
put some ribbon or something on the top. I was going to put this on as a little tuck spot. Another one of those ruffles. Now here, when I glued this piece of paper down for the pocket, I glued it onto coffee dyed paper, if you remember, and I had to tear off the edge, look, because it was too long. Well, it left me with that piece. Now again, waste not, want not. So all I did was I folded it there and then I folded it there. Now we can fold that over and we can put some of this decorative strip on there and use it as a little booklet. Or we can tear that off, but I like the addition idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some glue down that extra fold. And all I'm doing here is using up the leftover pieces for, you know from within the kit we're not adding any extra items or anything okay so we've got that on there and then oh it's blue in there of course i'm gonna bring this over like so make sure it's nice and straight stick some glue in there fold that down and then just like that we have created a little secret writing area okay and I'm going to pop that in that pocket there job done now I know that you can finish up all of that easily in here all I've done is I have put more of these postcards which I will back onto coffee dyed paper because they will fit in our envelopes or at yeah they'll fit in our envelopes and just be interesting pull outs so that's all I'm going to do there now, I may come back and do some of them with you in a minute, but what I want to do first is I want to make sure we address our closure and these tabs. And that's why I'm moving ahead, okay? I don't want you not to see that bit. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my glue book and I'm going to glue that corner okay and press it down and then I'm going to do the next page and I'm going to press it down basically what I want is five sheets okay and the reason I want five sheets is because I then want to put a piece of this on there like so okay make sure that's stuck and I know that sounds and looks a little bit mad but then what we're going to do is we're going to pull all that off and we are going to take circle punch okay and I'm going to push that all the way in there until I can get it to an area that I like so now see I love the way it's going to cut with that butterfly and that little bit of writing so I'm just going to punch that out and what that's done now is that's given us a beautiful now obviously if you've got areas like this where you miss the glue just go full inside and add a bit more glue okay yeah now that's fine so now we've got a nice thick piece okay I will ink up the edges of that in a minute okay not just yet <coughs> what I'm gonna do while that's setting up is I'm gonna address 
the tabs because at the moment what we've got is these three bare areas so my plan was that to use these thin little bits that were at the bottom of the tags on the sheet okay so first things first cut it out okay trim it off like so then i'm going to use corner rounder i'm going to use the one on my envelope punch board because it's easy and local and i'm just going to round uh, the top two corners and the reason I've rounded the top two corners is because the tab is rounded. If your tab's not round, don't worry about it. You don't need to do it. Okay. I'm going to find my inking brush. And I'm just going to put... I know I've not done it anywhere else. But the reason I want to do it here is because my theory is... That if this is the front edge, this is where all the handling will be. Okay. I'm now going to put, as always, why would you even question it? A bit of cheesecloth across. Let's cut up there for a change. A bit of cheesecloth underneath. Added interest. Blah de blah. Oops, sorry, I think I've just jogged you. I'm going to put some prick stick across there. Okay. I'm going to put it on, drag it across, put it down, drag it across, put it down, drag it across, press it down, trim it off. Okay. And then I'm going to obviously glue that. Okay. And I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to try and line it up. And that is our tab. And then I'm going to do exactly the same to these two. So pull that one off. Trim it with the scissors. The concentration of cutting with scissors. <laughs> Madness. Although I did get a Facebook message from my youngest daughter the other day. That's the one who had my grandson's birthday. And um, she said, basically, I've forgotten how to use scissors and showed me a rather nasty cut on her hand from using a pair of scissors. I just sent a message back saying, and you're how old? You know, it's crazy. Things we do to ourselves. So exactly the same principle all over again. I've rounded the corners. I'm going to put some glue across here. I'm not worried if I go onto the existing papers that are there. Again, I'm going to put it down, drag Put it down, drag, put it down, drag, put it down, drag, put it down. It just allows for a bit of gathering, a bit of interest. Okay, got those bits for something small later on. And then I'm going to glue that up again. And pop it down. Yeah.
like so. And then obviously the third one will be in exactly the same manner. So time's not racing away too much. So I'll do this one as well while I'm here. Like so. So we see if this is going to be the last one in this series, I'm going to have to get my brain rattling over tonight and try and work out now which way do I want that? I want it that way. So that will be the top. Um, get my brain rattling tonight and see what we can work on next. Um, I wonder if the answer might actually be to um, finally get this heirloom journal on camera. I have been doing a little bit in the background, but obviously I've not bought any to you on video, apart from the way we looked at doing the cover and we trimmed it off. So maybe that's the answer. Maybe we need to look at that. I'll see. Um, I see a few of you have put your votes in for which happiness in crafting kit I should be using next. It seems at the moment that the um, votes seem to be going for... The, sh the butterfly shades, because I think there's a butterflies in blue, butterflies in yellow, butterflies in pink. So there's a number of votes for them. There's also a number of votes for the vintage cars and gentlemen that I mentioned. I don't know if that's 100% sure that's the right um, doobie doobie doo. The right, what's the word I'm looking for? The right title but you know the men and motors right now what you need to decide i'm sorry about the mess dreadful mess on my desk i suppose you can even see what i'm doing what you need to decide now is how your folder is going to close do you want it to close with the two tabs or do you want it to close with the one why is that catching Or do you want it to close with one tab? You decide what you need to do, what you want to do. Because this is going to be our closure point. So if we want to do it with the one tab, obviously we need to adhere this here. And you're going to technically adhere it in the same place regardless. But you just need to decide which way round that you want it to be okay do you want it one two or one um now normally of course a book would open that way so it would feel right to do the two but somehow i feel like I like the one. I feel like I like the one. So I'm thinking I'm going to put it about there. And I'm going to use the one. Yes, I am, don't you know? Yes, I am. Right, so take my brush, round off the edges just to get a little bit of ink cover up those white edges we don't want them too wet this is a little bit bendy where i have put all the layers together and so much glue on it but it will dry beautifully i'm gonna put it about there so i need to find my hole and my grommets 
I am going to look at having it about there. So I want the centre to be yeah, just double make sure that you're obviously in the centre of your tab and you're not on your envelope flap, okay? So, about there, okay? Now, if you can't go through, then obviously take it off. You've now got a good dent in there and go through. Yeah, that is a little bit soft. You might want, in an ideal world, to wait till that's a bit drier. Okay. But. I wanted to do it because I wanted to finish it for you. So, there we go. Okay. Got our hole. Got our grommet. Now I'm sure you've all seen this done before. So just put the grommet oops, through the top. That's not very central. I might have to think about doing that again because that is going to really bug me. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I need to do that again. So, let's do it with a tacky glue, because it will dry a little bit quicker. Sorry, but I can't have that. That's going to really bug me. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now, obviously, if you want to, you can use some kind of card for this I just tend to use book pages all the way down the line because um, I want to use them up but I'm just looking at all my pieces and trying to work out what I want to use I'm going to use this one so you get that when I get to this point where I'm all but finished and I have pieces left I do one of two things I either put them all loose within the book or the file whatever it is that I've made and leave it inside in a pocket because that's then what I'm gonna add in as I work through the journal or I will put them into my stash to be used for a something else on another day. Okay, right, so we've now got a new button. Let's use my silver handed one because let's find the actual middle. That's much better. Much better. Now we've got an area there that hasn't properly stuck. So I'm just going to put an extra bit of glue on there. It's still not 100% central, but it's a lot better than it was. So get my grommet. Put my grommet. Oh, goodness me. Put that in there. Put it through there, so we'll turn it round, that's where you want it, okay, and C, 
set that. Like so. Okay. So that is now going to be my seal. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some ribbon, some um, seam binding, whatever it is that you want to act as your closure. Now, of course, I've not brought anything along with me. Um, let's use this ribbon. So we've got, we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I always do seven. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come obviously under, under there, around there, down there, okay. And obviously it's still a little bit wet. Just tie a big knot. Okay. Get it underneath. slightly puckered because I've pushed it while it's wet but that's fine I can live with that obviously if you wait till that is properly dry that won't happen and then you can either trim this short so you can't see it or you can leave it as a dangle and then we just go round like that okay obviously if you leave it you can use it as a rough tie and there we have our completed file folder project okay and just before I clear my desk of everything vintage botanical all I'm going to do, I mean obviously I will do those pieces, is I'm going to come along and I'm going to say I've still got this. So I'm going to pop it in that pocket and I can use that at a later date. I've still got this piece. I can use that for page embellishments, etc. I've got these two. I'm going to put them in this little inner pocket there. Okay, I've got all these little squares that I broke off. They will also go in that little pocket and I will use them for something else as I work through journaling in here. I've got the tabs and this odd pot belly. I'm going to put them in there also. And then I've got one tile and one tag and I've got this odd little B circle where I cut out the two pockets I'm going to put that in there also so there we go that is our folder project complete so drop the journal bring that over drop that and tie him up to be loved and used. Well, boom. There you go. As always, thank you so much for joining me in this project. I hope you've enjoyed it. You've gained some serious inspiration to get you crafting and busy. And as always, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.